What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Homie Hangout, where we help others move in excellence. And I have Dr. Isaac Guillen back on. Um, for those of you guys that haven't seen him before, I'll link to some previous conversations we had. Um, he, he's got a fascinating story. But so I was thinking, uh, Dr. G, as as you started to be known, um, if you, uh, you've been to YA, right? Yeah. And Twice, so... Yeah. Uh, so when, when, and how did that, did that start happening? Um, I, I, I did two terms in YA. The first term, I want to say, uh, I was 14. I want to say that's about 1975, somewhere on there. And, uh, I was actually in a reform school. Um, and I was, I was going to get a furlough and I had some problems with the teacher. He was a male teacher. Um, I had some problems with him because he used to fence, do fencing in, in the Olympics or something like that. And oh, yeah, where well, they have the knife, the swords. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the sword. Whatever. So he had a picture up. One, one time I was clowning him about it, you know. Um, so anyway, he ended up blocking my uh, my furlough, right? Mm -hmm. So I was, you know, I was pissed. I like, you know, what's happening? So um, me and him got into it. And then um, he said he was going to call security. So he picked up the old, it was an old phone, you know, the, the rotary right. type phone. So he picked up the phone and he started to call. And then I put my finger on the little thing to hang up. And I said, you know, I give up. Because once he called security, I knew it was going to be something different. Well, he slams the phone on my finger and I get, man, it pissed me off. Dude. And um, so anyway, I socked him, knocked him down. Then he ran to hit the buzzer on the wall. And I threw a chair at him to try to, uh, you know, dissuade him or whatever. Right. But anyway, he, he hit the button. And, and so I knew that I was done. So I took off. I, I ran. I ran through the back, way back by where the wood shop was and just jumped over the fence. And I punctured my uh, my wrist with the barbed wire. I got I me. Mean, I got scratched and stuff, but I punctured my wrist and was bleeding all over the place. But anyway, um, I ran. And um, later that day, I was caught, went to juvenile hall. And then finally, they, they said, you know, because I had already been to uh, different camps and stuff. And they right. said, yeah, well, you, you know, nobody in the county wants you. So they sent me to YA. That was, that was my first time. Um, so I went for escape and uh, escape from institution and assaulting an institutional teacher, you know. Um, and, and, you know, back in those days, they didn't give you a set amount of time. Mm -hmm. um, you went before the board and the board decided how much time you were going to do. You know okay. I mean? Yeah. Uh, so what was the first YA that you went to? Uh, Norwalk, Norwalk. It's a SRCC, Southern Reception Center and Clinic, mm. and everybody from all the different counties go to that uh, in Southern California because there's an also an NRCC, right? Further uh, Reception Center and Clinic or something, you know what I mean? And uh, so it, all the from all the counties, you know, uh, Riverside County, LA County, San Diego County. I mean, just all the different counties they go to that reception center, and. Um, if I remember the first the first unit and I, and I say unit because in in YA at that time um, there were only two facilities that I had been to um, which was Norwalk and YTS that had cells and those we would call units and then the other ones like uh, Nallis, Paso Robles, OH Close they all had dorms so they would call them cottages you know so uh, I went to uh, Pico unit I don't know why I remember that name but Pico unit. And that's where all the young kids were. And what I mean by youngsters were guys that were under 18. I think the oldest guys there were probably 17, 18. But they were all under 18. Um, and then they, obviously they had other units which had like uh, guy, guys that were under 18 but that were lifers. Mm -hmm. They would send them there. Or guys that were in juvenile life. I don't know if you're familiar with juvenile life. Back then they yeah. had juvenile life which they can keep you to your 25 and then they kick you out. Right. So, you know. They, uh, that was what we called juvenile life. And um, so I went to Pico unit and um, it was interesting. You know, you first get there, a lot of people, everybody, as soon as you walk in the door, everybody's looking at you like, who is this dude? Where's he from? Blah, blah, blah. You know, and uh, so I walk in and I already know the game because, you know, I got schooled by my, my older brothers and stuff. You know, you, uh, you, look at pe you look at people, but you don't stare. You know what right. I mean? You don't look away because then they think you're scared. 
but you don't try to mad dog because then they think you're trying to act like you're tough. And then, then either way, you're going to get, if you go either side, like weak or over, try to be over, they're going to test you. You know what I mean? Sure. I mean, you get tested anyways. Why a bunch of knuckleheads? But more so if you, if you, if you go the, you know what I mean? Yeah. Go, go the other route. So, um, you know, I go in there and then, you know, I go to my cell, make up my bed, but they lock the door. And then they say, when you come out for lunch. So when I get out to lunch, nobody nobody's talking to me you know what i mean but when i when i first get out there a couple of dudes come up and and they're trying to figure out where i'm from and um uh, some dude named uh i think it was local from echo park he comes up and says hey uh, after lunch we got to meet out on the yard i'll be there you know what i mean and so he left but when he came everybody scattered the guys that were trying to talk to me everybody ran like hmm. I didn't know. I found out later they're not supposed to talk to me until we had the meeting. You know what I mean? Oh, okay. And so, and so, um, one of the, one of these other dudes says, "Hey, don't worry about it, man. Okay, they do that to everybody." So, I, I didn't care. I tripped. So I went to La Chow, sat down with the guys. Nobody talked. We ate and we came back. And then finally, when we did go out to the yard, um, must have been about 30, 30 of us. You know what I mean? And um, they formed a big circle in this like. Because the 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 uh, Norwalk is like in a rectangle. You have one unit here on one side, and then you have two units, and then you have the lockup unit, and then you have two more units on the other side. So it was kind of rectangle. And in the middle was a it was like a square field, right? And uh, so that's where we met. We met in a big circle. Now the white boys and the, and the blacks they stayed in. They then come out when the when we have our meetings and stuff. Everybody respected each other's space that way. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. so um i get in there and then um you know they everybody introduced himself i introduced myself and uh then they go over the rules you know you can do this you 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 can't uh talk or hang out with the blacks you can't smoke with the blacks or the whites you can't smoke with them or, or drink coffee you know or anything you can't smoke after them or uh or drink after them you know what i'm saying so they had different rules, like with the, with the blacks and the whites, that you couldn't do this with them, you couldn't do that with them. So it was kind of a separation. I was like, at first I was kind of a little taken back because I had never seen that before. But um, those were the rules, you know what I mean? They said, if you, and then the, one of the, they, so they went over the other rules too about <clears throat> the way you're supposed to conduct yourself. You're supposed to have your shoes on at all times when the doors are open. Because, um, you know, sometimes things will kick off with the blacks, you know, right. not with the whites, um i mean later on you know we were able to mingle with them but they're at norwalk we weren't mm. and um they had all these other rules and, and one of the big rules was don't raise your hand to another uh, uh brother or another person but they called the group la raza you know what i mean mm. so when they when, when loco had come not local um the other dude that told me yeah they he had told me that la raza and i'm like la raza i never i never heard of that you know what i mean because the other dude had told me hey they, they, they do that to everybody they just want to give you the rules for la raza and i'm like what is hmm. that like a gang or something you know what i mean i didn't know what it was so right. we went out there and they, we had dudes from everywhere you know all different barrios and uh so anyway they went over all the rules and this and that blah 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 and then there's an initiation just stupid yeah that like stand straight mm -hmm. and everybody gets the sake once in the chest <laughs> I don't know why they did that. Like, if you, I don't know, you know, some right. kid stuff, you know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. okay, boom, 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 everybody socks you in the chest, you, hey, your chest is red for days, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But uh, but anyway, so you, you go through the little rituals and then, you know, you get along. Um, and then I ended up breaking the rule. Um, there was a dude named Smokey from Pico Viejo. And uh, he was just a bug, dude. I mean, he really was. And uh, he used to like bug everybody, he used to talk shit. And, and so one day we're sitting, we're playing cards. And he gets mad because he loses and he throws him on the on the ground on the table. Man. I tell him, hey, bro, kick back, man. You know, because I, I I know that the, the main dude name was Lalo from Evergreen. And he uh, you know, I mean, he um like to, you know, I mean, but he had his eye on on Smokey, so Smokey had been messing up. So I, you know, I didn't want Smokey to get in trouble or nothing. Like I always had a like a good heart to people, you know. I try to be nice to people and mm -hmm. try to, you know. But anyway, so I try, hey, bro, just kick back, chill out. Ah, fuck you. You can't tell me what to do. I'm like, oh, what did you tell me, dude? You know what I mean? Because now he said it in front of people. Now what right. am I going to do, right? So anyway, I ended up 
socked him up and whatever. They threw us in the hole. And I'm like, damn, now what? I broke the rule, right? So I was like stressed that night, like, damn, what's gonna happen? You know, you know, I didn't know. But anyway, so I get out and they have a, they have another meeting, a big impromptu meeting. They're like, we're gonna vote, see what you're gonna do. They, they, there are two options. One, they put me on the shineada, mm -hmm. right? The shineada was just kind of like the shine. Right. Nobody talks to for like three days. Um, and you know, you, you can't mix with anybody you're by yourself, mm -hmm. kind of isolated. So that's a shineada. The second option was the leva, mm -hmm. which the leva is like, you're no good. And now, you know, you're on your own. So if mm -hmm. you got problems with blacks or whites, you're on your own. And the homies can take off on you whenever they want without any repercussion to them. So I was like, damn, which one are we going to get? You know what I mean? <laughs> but anyway, they voted and they ended up saying, we're going to give you the shineada for three days. So don't talk to anybody, don't know nothing, right? In three days, we'll have a meeting, we'll bring you back in, you'll be good. So, all right, so I kept to myself, like, whatever, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm not right. going to, because, you know, shoot, it, it, you know, you, you, these dudes, they, some of them are serious, and some of them are in there for murder, or some of them, you know what I mean? So right. I wasn't going to play that little game, you know what I mean? Take my risk, but shit, I was only 14 years old. Some of these cats were like 16, 17, you know, some of them right. were bigger, you know what I mean? Right. And, um, but anyway, uh, I'm sitting at the table watching TV by myself and uh, Lalo comes up to me. He says, hey, uh, hey Smokey, you've been messing up, man. He's been hanging with the blacks, right? Mm -hmm. And I look over and he's sitting there playing cards with, with the blacks. And now I don't know why he did that, whether he didn't care or whether he's just lonely and he needed somebody to talk. I don't know why he did that. But anyway, so he tells me, hey, Take care of them, and we'll take you off the shake mm. You know, you know. I made a second, hot second. Okay, right. so I, I said, all right, well, that's fine. You know, so you know, I look around and see when the counselors were no counselors. Okay, we're in my moment. So I walk like I'm going to a table next to him. Sit down. I'm gonna go sit down. As soon as he looks at me, bang! I take off on him again. But this time, when I came out, and hey, the homies, hey, you know, big hugs. Hey, right. thank you for that. Blah 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 whatever so and then they shook smoky i never know whatever happened to him but i know if he came back he, he would probably get lit up by other homies too so sure um but, but anyway that was my first experience with that but what's weird was when lala was there he took care of everything everything ran in a smooth like orderly fashion you know what i mean mm -hmm. and then because it's only a reception center so you're only there for a month two months depending on um you know, your medicals, because you got to do all your medicals, you got to do, all, they do the same thing in the joint, you know, when you get there, you check your teeth, your eyes, and you see right. the psych, and then you see the committee that they tell you, like, where we're going to send you, and that stuff, and so when Lalo left, Lalo and um, Loco from Echo Park, when they left, people were jockeying for position, like, who's going to take over, you know what I mean, and there was a lot of problems, dude, like, that's when I my first, like, I had never seen like infighting within a group, mm -hmm. but that was the first time I seen like, hey, dude, dude's politicking and dude talking shit. And I'm like, is that what this shit is really about? You know, about those like, you know what I mean? Right. So anyway, they ended up voting a dude in and I abstained. I didn't vote because I didn't think anybody there had the same temperament or intelligence of Lalo. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And a couple of dudes came up to me later. Hey, man, how come you didn't vote for me? Blah, blah, blah. You know what I'm saying? Right. But, hey, and I, I had the Taiwan dude, Chuko from Monte Florida, the truth. Hey, bro, you didn't really like, you know what I mean? Right. You, you didn't really I, I don't think you deserve that position, brother. You know what I mean? Right. So, so, but anyway, I mean, that was neither here nor there. I was nobody. But, but I, it was just some, uh, to me, it was a, an indoctrination into or, or a first look at politics. Mm -hmm. the prison politics but they were incarceration politics i guess you would call right. it and uh, i said nah you know what it's kind of stuff is stupid you know what i mean because mm -hmm. why you got vatos doing that kind of stuff you know what i mean because yeah. this should have been a smooth transition and everybody and then later i got in a few more fights but other people got in fights but they wouldn't even really do anything to them you know what i mean mm -hmm. it was more there was a lot of favoritism and a lot of if you knew that the main dude or whatever Everything was cool. Some dudes got shanyada. Some dudes didn't get anything. You know mm. what I mean? But they never gave anybody leva, mm. um, but, which was crazy. But, okay, so those were the rules. And, 
and and so it's kind of like you're brought into a, a a different world you know you got to learn their language and you got to learn their you know but the thing was it was like with lalo and loco they they were like gangsters i mean they dressed with a pants up high and you know what i mean they were they were they were like homies homies from the water for years and um <laughs> I want to, I don't remember what local was in there for, but I know Lalo was in there for murder. Um, but anyway, these guys, so I, in hanging with them, after I took care of Smokey, Lalo took a liking to me. And so I started picking up his style, you know what I mean? Um, more of his style of his dress and started wearing my pants a little baggy, a little higher with pleats and, and stuff like that. So um, it kind of changes what you, the way you think you perceive things. But, you know, when I, before I went in, uh, before I went to 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 now uh, to uh, uh, Norwalk, I thought you know I was a gangster, you know, gang right. member. I'm a gangster. But when I got in there in that little circle, I realized I'm like in the middle of the road. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. There were some dudes that were way more gangster than me, and there were some dudes that were more lops. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I was like in the middle, right. and it kind of opened my eyes to a lot of uh, more of the LA gang structure because most of the dudes were from LA and uh, how they operated their gangs and how certain things happened. And there was a few stabbings and some fights. And that's why, hey, dude, you know, you're with a bunch of young kids and uh, a lot of them were trying to make a name for themselves. So, right. so there, there, was a lot of, there was a lot of fights, but there were a lot, you know, a few stabbings here and there, and some beat down, they, they, the old uh, battery in a, in, a, in a sock thing. Oh, yeah. They used that a lot. Yeah, they yeah. used that a lot. You know, we use stupid weapons, sissy sticks. I don't know if you heard of sissy sticks. No, it's a, a, a toothbrush. I mean, they might have another name for it. We call them sissy sticks. It's a toothbrush with razor blades melted at the end. They so had now they slash. That's for for guys that have been to the joint in more recent years. That's going to be a funny name because those they call them tomahawks. Oh, um, tomahawks. Yeah, yeah. No, we call that's, them. Sticks you have one, kids, yeah. one very feminine name and one masculine name. You know, yeah, or like, macho. Yeah, we yeah, call yeah. Them sissy sticks. They weren't knives. You weren't stabbing nobody. We're just slashing them, you know what I mean? So anyway, that's what we call sissy sticks. That's yeah, it's crazy. I know. That's yeah. so I, and that, that and the the the, the uh, batteries in the sock. Back then mm -hmm. you could, and back then you could smoke in Hawaii, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And uh, I couldn't smoke because you had to be 16 to smoke. So mm -hmm. I was too young, you know what I mean? Uh, but they, but Lalo, when he would give cigarettes during uh, visiting, he would give me packs because they would bring them like cartons and stuff, and he would. And so I would get busted and they'd give me like an EP, an early program, hmm. uh, which kind of like sucked, but it, eh, whatever, you know, it just, yeah. when you, after, when you go to dinner, after dinner, you get ready for showers. Once you're done with showers, they open up the program, you know, so you can go out there and watch TV or play cards, you know, till like 10 or 11 at night. But if you had an early program after showers, they lock your door. Just so when they open the doors, you couldn't come out, you know what I mean? Right. Right. Well, they called it an early program. And I got that because I was too young to smoke. So they would give me write-ups. So I don't remember what, what they called the write-ups. I just know they are write-ups. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, but, a, I, but, but I never really, like, colored too much outside the line. The fights that I did have, you know, had, had some sort of meaning. You know, some people were just out of hand. Or one time it was, I, it was a dude from Eastside. It just, he didn't even get it all out. Mm. He started the Eastside. And I took off on them, you know. But, it, you know, when you're young and you're a kid, you don't think about certain things. You just react, sure. you know what I mean? And right. um, anyway, so. That's a trip that you guys had. To Norwalk. Yeah. Huh? That's a trip that you guys had even back then, right? Because you're talking about before I was born, right? I was born 77. Oh, yeah. So, that was great. Right so. Yeah. Um, twinkle in your daddy's eye at that time. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's. Uh, but. uh but it's a trip. Some of the rules that that you guys had, I didn't realize that some of that stuff stretched that far back, right? In in terms of yeah, like having your shoes on and and that sort of stuff. You know, you yeah, you fast forward, you know, 20, 30 years, and and that's what guys are doing in the joint, right? That's that's you know, those are some of the same rules. But so, so you go from NRCC and then uh, but oh, SRCC. I mean, I'm sorry, SRCC. Uh, and, and I, know, okay. I was gonna say that's just your part, the NRC. Right. <laughs> right. You know? and, then, and then where'd you go? From there, I went to Nellis, Fred C. Nellis. Mm -hmm. And um, in Nellis, 
I only did about six months, which was good because um, my crimes weren't like real heavy. They were, you know, escape and assault, right. which aren't really like big crime. They weren't murders. They were attempted right. murders, anything serious like that. So um, there, um, I was, I was in Kennedy cottage. It's funny because I remember the names of those um, <laughs> places but some of the other ones I don't. The later on, the ones later on, I don't remember. I mm. don't, and I don't know why. And even like in Paso, where I spend more time, I don't even remember the names of those cottages. But anyway, I was at Kennedy Cottage. We were right next to uh, uh, the. Uh, there was Washington, and there was another one, what they called the White Elephant, which was the lockup unit, right? Um, all the all the cottages were like made of that brown brick, mm -hmm. but that one, that building was the only white one, so we called it the White Elephant, you know. Mm. And uh, so I get there and there's no, there's no La Raza there. You know what I mean? All the homies are more lit, uh, loose, uh, uh, kind of loose. You know what I mean? It, they have certain rules, like kind of the same rules with the blacks, but, but not with whites. You could talk to the whites. You couldn't smoke or drink after them either, but you could talk to them mm -hmm. and hang out with them or whatever, but with, not with the blacks. It was blacks. It was the same. They were like the enemy. You, you avoid them. You don't talk to them. You don't hang with them or nothing hmm. um but they didn't have the rules and they didn't have like you got to get punched in the chest or they didn't have la raza but they did have the rules and so you know we went i mean there were fights they were you know some slashings i'm not gonna say stab there were a few stabbings but there were some slashings um they were you know a lot of fights uh interracial every once in a while would be within the group you know within the raza you know some some dudes didn't get along but th those were kids man they were like in Nellis they would test you like my like one of my first days went to uh to chow I think one probably my first day might have been second day I don't remember um I'm one of the guys that sleeps next to me um uh, Sapo from uh Wine or Sapo I think his name was Sapo from down south from Brawley um he was telling me oh watch this this dude walks in and I knew the kid because I, I had seen him in Norwalk, right? And he walks in like he, he owns the place, right? Uh, for wife and he walks in like he owns the place. He, he got, he got you know, touched up a, a few mm -hmm. times because of that. You know, they say, hey, don't, don't be acting like, you know, you're right. hard, brother. So anyway, but anyway, so um, he walks in and everybody right away, everybody looks now in there, you come in, we could do, do probably two or three cottages at a time. You know, you, you know how you come in, you fill in the rows, and then as they're emptying, they fill them up again. So not ever, not all the cottages fit in the in the chow hall at the same time. So you probably get maybe two, three cottages at the most. And uh, so he's coming in, and old boy tells me, "Hey, check them out." So he walks in crazy. And then they had this little thing where, so he's walking, you know, with his tray down the down the middle aisle, and somebody yells, "Hey, where you from?" You know, and he he looks around and white fans and then somebody from some other section they fuck white fans and then he looks like he wants to fight you know and then somebody else says it yeah fuck what but he's not seeing like who's saying it right he gets mad he throws his tray like he wants to fight you know what i mean it's some people start throwing like cornbread at him <laughs> and it's just funny and then the cops yeah. come in they cuff him up take him out but but every every once in a while there, there'd be fights you know what i mean and these dudes didn't even know each other they're just like testing every once in a while it would be like rival gangs and they would get mm -hmm. into it or blacks or whites that knew each other they mm -hmm. would fight but for with the raza we were like the only ones that would be like the little gang thing like where are you from trying to test your manhood you know what i mean right. is this dude gonna is this dude gonna stand up or is he gonna say oh, uh, ranker you know not say no i don't bang or you know you know how it is right but right. um I'll just, I'll just stay real quiet you know what i mean um and that happened too and then you know some dudes get punked in there but whatever mm -hmm. um that was you know that's against the rules you know i mean i always thought it was until this one kid that ended up um they they were sexually abusing her in another cottage right and i let her found out it was a rasa that was doing it you know what i mean after i i, I got into the moreno for that kid a black dude for that kid um but it just tripped me out like that part too you know what i mean just certain things in the inside kind of like hey man we, you don't do that to your own people you know what right. I mean? um but anyway they ended up doing that but but in the chow house where a lot because that's the only times that they would let us mingle that and church mm -hmm. 
other than that, you, we really didn't mingle with them. Even when we went to school, we, we were in our own uh, classrooms and stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. So we didn't really get to mingle with a lot of the guys from other cottages. But um, but in the chow halls where you ran into a lot of people, you know what I mean? Right. And they would bring them in at different times. And so, if, you know, <laughs> a lot of stuff went down. Sometimes you'll be walking in your line and all of a sudden you're passing another one. And boom, everybody take off running at each yeah. other, you know. And uh, so it was crazy. I mean, they, they're, they're kids, you know, everybody's trying to sure. like make a name for themselves and trying to trying to prove something, you know. Mm -hmm. So anyway. So you wind up getting out of there, right? You wind up yeah. leaving from and then you come back to YA and it's a different experience. Yeah. After six months, I, I, uh, I, I got out. I was only out about a month or two. Mm -hmm. I came back for four counts. They, they arrested me for four counts attempt to murder and they dropped them to saw with deadly weapon. And then when I went to trial, they ended up kicking one of them. Mm -hmm. So I, I went back on, uh, on my second turn for three counts of saw with deadly weapon, baseball bat and a knife. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was a little gang, stupid stuff. You know what I mean? Right. And uh, the second time was a little different. They didn't send me to Pico. They sent me to, to a one. And I, that one, I don't remember the name of, but it was to the right of Pico. But that was a lockdown unit. Like we were locked down like 20 hours a day. They gave us some a little bit of time. Like we would go eat or we showers, and they gave us a little time to like watch TV or make phone call. Mm -hmm. um, but we didn't come out all together, you know, only a handful at a time and stuff like that. Um, and it might have been because I got sent back so quick. You know what I mean? Mm, yeah. I don't know why they sent me there, but it might have been because I got sent back so quick. And then this time I have more violent stuff right. on my record. You know what I mean? Right. So um, after I, you know, did my little thing there and then they, they um, the classification told me, hey, we're going to send you up to uh, OH clothes, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I, I think their thinking is like, because my, my, man, my man, but I was always kind of a, one of the smart kids academically. Mm -hmm. And um, their thought is we pull him away from the gang. Maybe he won't act like a gang member, you know, like mm -hmm. a gangster. But you let, you put them in a in a gang lifestyle and you get indoctrinated, you become more like that, right? Right. So they said, okay, we're gonna send you up to OH clothes. I'm like, man, what's up? I, I never heard OH clothes. Mm -hmm. And so when I got back to my uh, my unit, I, I started asking around. They're like, yeah, it's up north and blah 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 and this and that. And but nobody said anything about Norteños. Nobody said anything about Northerners. Well, they weren't Norteños then. Back then, right. they just called them Northerners. But nobody said anything about that. So you know, I didn't know going up to some place in Stockton up north is what they told me. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I said, okay, that's that's cool. So the morning that I'm going to go up there, I go to Chow. They, they get you out real early because the bus takes off at the crack of dawn, you know. So I get over there, I'm, I'm eating, and I oh, notice this older dude looking at me. So I'm like, who's this about? Do I know him? You know, friend, enemy. You right. know, I, I, so I, I couldn't place him. So I said, well, you know, when I get in the bus, so we they took us and we load us on the bus. When I get on the bus, I'm gonna sit next to him to find out what's up, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, so anyway, I jumped on the seat next to him, and um, after kind of, kind of people got in, I said, "Hey, hey, hey, homie, you know, you know me? Well, what's up?" He's like, "Hey, you're Negro, right?" I'm like, what? I was tripped. Like, how does dude know my name? Mm -hmm. And uh, so anyway, it, we started talking, and it come come to find out. He was going back to YTS. He had been at YTS because reception center, it's all it was also like a medical clinic. Mm -hmm. So when you need some medical, they send you there too, right? It's like a, a temporary transfer. So right. he was at, doing time at YTS. He got transferred to to back to uh, Norwalk for his medical thing. And then he ended up going back to YTS, right? Mm -hmm. So he tells me, hey, uh, can you do us a favor? And I'm like, who's us, dude? And he's like, <laughs> well, my homie's at TS, right? Mm -hmm. Now, everybody, you know, you're in YA, you know what TS, YTS is youth training school, the gladiator school, they called it back in the day. Right. Um, so, you know, I mean, the, the lifestyle that I was living, I knew I was going to eventually end up there, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Or I, I figured that I was, you know, that's like the graduation, you know, you kind of aspire. Yeah, maybe I could hit that yard one day or whatever, you know. Right. So I'm listening to him and he st starts telling me <clears throat> that the northerners and the southerners are getting along up north mm -hmm. I'm like okay i don't even have a clue what he's talking about you know right. what I mean? and uh he started telling me yeah you know the, you know they're, we, they've been going at it and blah 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 and i had heard something about it but i had heard something about that it was in prison 
I didn't know that it was with YA with the youngsters. I had heard something about a war or something going on in prison, but I didn't really like know too much about it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so uh, he's like, yeah, you know, they're, they're, they're talking, they're hanging out, they're getting along and that can't happen. You know, it's not good. And I'm like, okay, so, you know, what do you want me to do? I kind of already knew what he wanted me to do, you know? Yeah. So I'm like, all right, well, I'll check it out for you guys. And, uh, and you know, promise, I don't know. I don't know what he's talking about. So I'll go figure it out, you know? Mm-hmm. So anyway, I get up there later that night. I start checking stuff out. I kind of see some of what he's talking about. So I start planning, right? And uh, you can't, you know, I wasn't going to tell anybody what, um, what, my, what the goal was or what was going on. But so I started like... <clears throat> watching people and, 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 and making sure, you know, like who was hanging out with who. And um, mm-hmm. so there's a dude named Wedo from neighborhood. He was hanging out with some dude named Weasel from, uh, man, it's not in the East Bay. Right now, I can't remember the name. It's in the, it's in the book. All that stuff's in the book, mm-hmm. um, in my book uh, about that. But anyway, so um, there, uh, um, man, that's bugging me. Starts with an E on the East Bay. The just east side starts with an E. Yeah, just um, south of uh, Oakland. South of Oakland. Yeah. No. It'll come to me. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't. Yeah. So it, it, you know, <laughs> that's right. the most. But, and, yeah. and but anyway, that 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 dude was from Buiza was from that neighborhood, and and so I noticed they they were kind of hanging out, and other dudes were hanging out with them. So I'm like, okay, well, so that's kind of like the, the peak here. Mm-hmm. And a matter of fact, I even started argument with weasel just to see like who would stand up for him you know what i mean mm-hmm. so i can get an idea of who's who and so anyway i started talking to a few dudes at the church um because in the church we're able to mingle with guys from other other, other right. units other cottages um not not so much school you know and so uh, anyway i gathered a, a few homies that were like from down south that weren't hanging like weren't hanging with the norteños you know what I mean? or the northerners I mean, it's a habit now, I guess you, right. you just say the word North thing. But they were back then, they were Northerners who were, weren't hanging with them. But you could kind of tell the stilo back then because they, the, a lot of Northerners had long hair. Some of them had what they call rat tails, I guess, mm-hmm. what they call them. Yeah. They had those. Yeah. So you could tell. And then the, the guys from the South would shave their heads. And so you could kind of tell in the way they were, wore their clothes. You know what I mean? Uh, the guys from the South were more, a little higher, more gangster. Some of them had pleats. And, you know, they would dress a little different. So you could kind of tell. Some of them you couldn't really tell, but but a lot of them you could tell, like, oh, this dude's from up north. Mm-hmm. And uh, so anyway, and, so, and the way they talked, the way they talked, you could really tell. Uh, a lot of that just from up north talked like blacks, you know what I mean? Mm. Um, but anyway, Even so... Back then so, in the 70s, huh? Yeah, they, 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 they hung out with them or something. I don't, right. I don't know. I, I mean, to be honest, I don't know. But I know they had, like, a different stilo, you know what I mean? Mm. And um, so we... Um, we finally, I, I got a, a good little group of dudes and we say, let's handle it on this particular day. So we end up going to the chapel and there's a bunch of dudes. And, you know, so as soon as we get off, there's a, a little dude from the Harpies, uh, Ormiga. He goes and takes off on Wero. And then everybody started jumping in. Boom, boom, boom. Some of the dudes didn't want to fight. They like went back into the chapel. Some of them stood there. So, but we were fighting with the Northerners and the Southerners that were hanging with the Northerners. So uh, we so were fighting. Southern- we were Huh? So some of the Southerners, even in the, when the, when it kicked off, some of the Southerners still were defending the Northerners. Um, I don't know that that they were defending them, but they were. We 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 already knew kind of like who the people were, the targets. Mm-hmm. So we just went after everybody. Oh, oh, you okay. know what I mean? We just, we just like went after everybody. Everybody that wasn't part of our little group. You know what I mean? Ah, oh, got you. So we, I mean, we were outnumbered, but um. Mm-hmm. You know, a few of us had some, some, you know, little, uh, pl- even the playing field, you know, right. they weren't big knives. They, they weren't big knives, but enough to like keep some people off or whatever. Sure. And a couple of people got stabbed, a couple of acting northerners got stabbed. Mm-hmm. And so they, they, they locked everybody down. They brought in um, um, some people from, uh, from, and you know, in the book, I was just reading it, I was thinking about it. In the book, I had put Chad. And I don't know why I put Chad, because I don't think Chad was open when I was there. My uh, Carl Holton or OH Close. Mm-hmm. I mean, not OH Close, Carl Holton or DeWitt Nelson. Oh, but yeah. there's like a three, a three. Uh, Chad is there now, but I, you know, I don't know how I got that confused, but I was just thinking about it. Um, and we were talking about it. 
Mm -hmm. But but anyway, so they bring those guys because that those places were the older kids, mm -hmm. and they, they would kick up, kick off a lot more than OH, right? Oh, okay. So they brought some of the some of the counselors from there who were experienced with some of the riots or whatever. And so anyway, they lock all of us down. All of the people from the south side is the ones we got locked down. Not just not just our group, but some of the group that was fighting with us, you know, that were hanging right. out with the northern. And so they wanted to find out who who had the knives and who did what and blah blah blah. But nobody was talking. And they, they normally they when you get in a fight in YA, they send you to lock up for 24 hours. They do that to everybody. Whether you started the fight, whether you're even fighting at all, you got beat up, they'll still send you a 24 hour lockup. You know what I mean? And so, but we they kept us for three weeks, you know. Hmm. And then finally, when no, they decided, you know, these dudes, nobody's gonna talk. They shipped us all down down south. Most of the majority of us went to YTS, mm -hmm. the youth training school. And some of them, they shipped to other places. Um, but when they shipped us there, they shipped us separately. Like the guys from the south that were fighting, the guys that were hanging with the, the southerners that were hanging with the northerners. Mm -hmm. They shipped us differently. And then they put us in different units when we got to YTS. You know, I, I didn't think much about that. Um, but then Wedo apparently had a couple of homeboys that were at YTS. They were there for murder. And I know because Diablo, I had met Diablo in my first term, which was one of his homeboys, who was part of the murder. They had killed some dude from Norwalk. Mm. And so I said, oh, when I seen them, they, what, what happened was when we got, when we were in YA, not, I mean, in uh, TS, YTS, um, we had the same meeting, right? They called it, they told us to go out to the meeting and counselors were in on it. They, yeah, you guys got to go to a meeting. So we go out to this meeting, but th this time there's like about a hundred dudes, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that's just like a third of what, because you know, the, the, the white at that time, I think had probably, I don't know, 800, 900 inmates, you know, prison, mm -hmm. uh, prisoners or wards or whatever they call them wards. Um, but the Rasa had was pretty deep. They were probably like about 300 mm -hmm. um, Rasa there. But there are only a, a, about 100 of us out there. And so everybody started introducing themselves. And then when I noticed that these dudes were his homeboys and they, you know, said their barrio and all that. And so I'm, I'm keeping my eye on them because we just we just touched up his boy, you know. Right. You know he was all knotted up. He, he got cut. He got he was bleeding all over, you know. But um, so what ended up happening, was we let that go because I was in the, in the orientation. So I didn't think much about it. Um, so man, it's just all this stuff culminates together. You, it, it, mm -hmm. It's weird, but anything, everything came together at TS. So, um, you know, I, I was actually pr always pretty good at academically, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, the first time I took the tests, uh, they, they accused me of cheating, right? Mm -hmm. They said, no, your scores are too high. Well, because right. of the way I look or what? I mean, well, right. I didn't know why they were doing that, but anyway, they, they made me retest with a, with a counselor right there while a teacher watching me mm -hmm. and I scored higher the second time which made me laugh because so anyway they told me hey do you want to go to the college unit right mm -hmm. so I figured college unit all right yeah college dudes they're, they're gonna be more relaxed and gonna be all this putting them up and causing problems and fights right. and stabbings and whatever so I said shit yeah I'll go to the college unit right mm -hmm. and um, so I go to the college unit and as soon as I walk in that's why I see you right there in the day room. <laughs> two of that, two of that right. dude's homeboy, the two older, the dude that pulled the trigger, mm -hmm. Nego and and his other homeboy. I forget his other homeboy's name. But anyway, they're two right there, and I'm like, oh, shit, all bad now. You know, what I mean, right. I'm thinking, dude, and these dudes are there for murder. They're like in their early twenties. I'm like, another murder ain't gonna worry them. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> right. And so I'm like, shit, I, I, I get on my toes right away. As soon as I get into my cell. Boom, I start, you know, throw a couple of socks in a, in a, in a, I mean, batteries in a sock. Mm -hmm. I get a toothbrush. Back then you could smoke, like I said, and I had a lighter. I made me a sissy stick. I, man, I, I said, man, this is going to go down. But I had my stuff just chilling, you know, and um, I was there for a little bit. And then uh, I came out and, and I was in my sound. And then I came out and old boys like um, Nego comes up to me. Hey, I heard what happened. Up mm -hmm. I said, yeah, your homeboy tell you he was hanging with a northern nurse. Mm -hmm. And he kind of like, some of the other homies that, you know, were there were kind of like, hey, was, was that true? Or like, que esta pasando? You know what right. I mean? And uh, he goes, hey, well, we're going to go to the pool. We're going to go talk to Huero. You want to come with us? 
Yeah, I'll go with you. I can, you know what I mean? I got nothing to hide. So I'll go with you. So anyway, we end up going to the chapel and um, Wedo doesn't show up. Hmm. And so we go like two, three times. I run into a dude uh, from Crow Village, Angel, that I had met way back in one of the one of the camps in Orange County when I was locked up. Mm -hmm. So we, we went back there and uh, <clears throat> and um, so anyway, I um, uh, he he comes up to me and say, hey, hey, be careful, because you know everybody's talking about right. what happened up north and about what's going on with this dude. Hey, be careful, there's some snakes. He said, I'm gonna shoot you a fierro. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. This is after a couple of times, you know, and uh, so I'm like, man. It, it got finally to the, about the third. The, finally, I said, you know, we went. He didn't show up again. And the dudes from the unit were saying, hey, your homeboy's bullshitting, man, you know? Right. But I knew that, look, you, you put those dudes in a spot. They're going to have to do something to me or they're going to have to do something to their homeboy. Right. And let it sit, right? I mean, mm -hmm. and I don't know how close they were to their homeboys, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, but I just said, man, it, I don't think they're going to do something to his homeboy. They're going to try to do something to me. Right. Right. So I may, I put it in my mind that, you know, somebody had to go mm -hmm. and it wasn't going to be me. So right. that, that day, I just like, I couldn't wait for the fierro. Mm -hmm. I had the CC stick. I had the, 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 the batteries mm -hmm. in the soft. I, mm -hmm. I said, you know, in the morning, I'm going to kill one of them dudes. I'm going to go after him. I had to kill him. Because it was, had to be a surprise, you know. I'm gonna kill one of them before they kill me, and uh, it was hard, you know. And uh, thinking about having to kill somebody, I'm 15 years old, dude. I'm, you know, right. instead of thinking about, hey, should I go to the prom or should I, well, should I go to the mall? I'm thinking about, should I kill this dude or let them kill me or something. But but anyway, I, so I prepared my mind. As a matter of fact, I even prayed about it. I prayed, you, you God forgive me for what I'm gonna do. You know what I mean? Right. But I'm I'm here you know this is this is the reality this is the place right. and all the stories i heard you know about all these uh, you know there were a lot of fights a lot of stabbings but and even when i when i first got there i saw different things but nobody had ever been killed you know what i mean mm -hmm. but you i didn't want to be the first one right so <laughs> I, I, you know what i mean yeah. i put it in my mind i'm gonna, I'm gonna take one of these fools out you know i have to you know and then if i take them out then they'll you know they'll probably leave me alone or whatever. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Or if, if not, they're, they're going to lock me up because they have what they call a rock, which is a lockup. I said, they'll probably lock me up and then at least I'll be safe in there. But 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 I couldn't just let it go. You know what I mean? I couldn't. You, you're in prison. You can't walk away. You can't tell anybody. You're not going to tell the guards. You can't tell. Well, they didn't run guards. They're counselors, but they, they act as guards, whatever. Right. Um, and so, and, you know, the other thing is in YA, YTS was the first place I had been to that actually had towers. Hmm. You know what I mean? No other YA had towers. So when I got there, when I saw it, it looked more like a prison than it did a, a YA, you know what I mean? So, hmm. and these were all the heavy hitters. You hear all the stories. And I said, man, oh, these dudes ain't going to be playing. You know what I mean? And, you know what? Uh, I'll tell you what. Let's, uh, I don't mean to cut you off. Let's pause it there because I know you have something to do, right? And, and so, uh, so. There will be a part two to this story, um, and and as it stands now, you're uh, you're at YTS with a cell full of weapons, uh, trying to prepare yourself to go outside and and kill somebody, right? Um, yeah. And so let's see how it unfolds, right? Let's see how it unfolds. Um, thank you again for your time. I, I always appreciate you. Uh, you're a very good storyteller, and um, and I would encourage people to get the book State Raised by Dr. Isaac Guillen. Um, there'll be a link to it at the end of this video. And I will link to, to the previous conversations that we've had. And, and yeah, stay tuned. Anyways, folks, help others move with excellence. That's what homies do. Help yourself at the same time because you're worth it. And help your community uh, because they need you. And, and we'll catch you again soon. Again, thank you, uh, Dr. G. Thank you for helping me.